I'm John McCoy with 8541 Tactical, and we are here with the much anticipated Modular Driven Technologies LSS chassis review. This is the LSS chassis I have sitting in front of me, and LSS stands for Lightweight Sniper System. And Lightweight pretty accurately describes this system. The base chassis, the center section right here that you get from Modular Driven Technologies, weighs in at a scant 1.6 pounds. Uh, that is a flyweight chassis system. Now, obviously, that goes up when you attach a buttstock and a pistol grip, and depending upon what your choices are, that can be a pretty substantial increase in overall weight. Uh, however, the way we have it set up here, even with our 26-inch Remington Varmint action, it is a fairly lightweight and good handling system. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that you get with the Modular Driven Technologies LSS chassis. Uh, first of all, in the box, you get this center section. No buttstock, no pistol grip, and no magazine. The chassis system is compatible with Accuracy International chassis system magazines, AICS magazines, both the metal 5-round and 10-round 308 type magazines, and also the Polymer 223 magazine. So you are covered on that front. Uh, the system also obviously accepts MDT's own Polymer magazines that they have just released. And uh, we haven't had a chance to work with those yet, but we are looking forward to working with them in the future. Now, when you take the LSS chassis out of the box, it does have a single bipod stud affixed to the forend. Uh, we were not going to use that bipod stud, so we went ahead and switched it out with one of MDT's Picatinny rail sections. Now, we went with the small rail section, but if we wanted a QD sling mount, position, we could have gone with the longer rail section that actually has a sling mount built into it. Uh, we went with the short rail in order to maintain the lightweight aspect of this chassis system. Now we went with the Atlas version 8.1 bipod because it gives us a lot of flexibility on where we can do the leg position. We can either keep them at 45 degrees like we have here, straight down, we can kick them straight forward, 45 degrees back, or we can fold them all the way back underneath the forend. Uh, when they're folded back underneath the forend, it gives us just a really sleek, smooth profile to the system. Not a whole lot to hang up on brush or whatnot. Now, we went ahead and we dropped our action into the chassis system, and it bolted right in with no problems at all. Uh, MDT is nice enough to offer a rather ample recoil lug recess, so if you're using a Badger lug or some other aftermarket lug, uh, then there's a really good chance that it's going to fit in the LSS system. Uh, Mounting the action into the LSS is as simple as dropping it in and then tightening the bolts. Uh, we have the action screws, in this case, tightened to 65 inch pounds, uh, which is what we normally tighten our Remington systems down to. Uh, the inlet in the LSS chassis system is a V-block type bedding system. So as you tighten the action down, it compresses against the side of the chassis in two separate areas, uh, and it is a time-proven design for a chassis mounting block. And with our Remington 700 varmint action here, uh, when we mounted it up and took it out and shot it for accuracy, uh, we saw that we were getting the mechanical accuracy the action is capable of. Uh, it was equivalent to the accuracy that we've gotten in several different chassis systems that we've had this action mounted in. So no problems on the accuracy front. Now one thing that I will mention is this action does have a Timney 510 trigger mounted to it. Uh, the Timney 510 is kind of peculiar in that when you apply the safety, it has a pin that protrudes out the side of the trigger. And sometimes with some relatively tight inlets, you can run into problems with that pin hitting the side of the inlet and not allowing you to place the action on safe. We did not experience any of that with the LSS chassis. Now the LSS chassis accepts a wide variety 
of buttstock systems. Uh, just about any collapsible AR-15 buttstock out there will mount up to the LSS chassis with a couple of small exceptions. Uh, one being the Magpul UBR buttstock. Now the UBR, although it does have standard receiver threads, it has this little uh, divot here that is supposed to index on the indent on the back of an AR-15 buttstock. As you can see, there is no divot here on the LSS chassis, so there's nothing for that to stick into. If we tried to mount this on here, then the bottom part of the buttstock would stick down and it would interfere with your hand. So the UBR is out unless you purchase the fixed stock adapter from MDT, and that will add a little bit of length of pull here, but what it basically ends up doing is it gives you that recess to mount this lug into and allows you to use fixed stocks on the MDT LSS. Now, pistol grips, this accepts most AR-15 pistol grips. However, MDT again cautions against using pistol grips that have a duck bill on it, like the, the grip that we're using here. Now, this is a Falcon Ergo Tactical Deluxe grip, and it does have the duck bill. But the Falcon grip is made out of a nice soft rubber, so when we tighten it down, the duck bill just bends back and contours to the back of the chassis system here. If this was a hard plastic Magpul Mo grip or some of the other grips that are out there, you might have some problems tightening it down. So to be on the safe side, go with a flat top grip. Now Falcon does make a flat top version of this grip and it may be something that we go to in the future because really that moves my hand back too far and I have quite a bit of reach to the trigger up here. So I would actually, after working with this for a little while, prefer the flat top grip that does not have the duck bill on it. So we may swap that out in the future. Now let's talk about a couple of the features on the chassis. We tried to take this rifle out and shoot it in a very wide variety of shooting problems uh, to see how it performed. Uh, it really actually performed well in just about every type of role that we put the system into. It just has this minimalist shape to it that lends itself to a, quite a few different shooting styles. The first shooting style that we tried it out with was just regular old offhand shooting like you would if you were out hunting and scared up some game real quick. And this nice curve to the front of the magwell actually lends itself to a palm swell very, very well. And on the 26 inch action, that just happens to be the balance point for the action. So I was able to throw it up and take some offhand shots really, really easily with the system set up the way it is here. I thought that this abbreviated short forend was gonna cause us some problems for that, but it didn't. Unfortunately, because we went with the short forend here, we didn't have a sling attached, so I can't tell you how well it works uh, when we're slung up, but I would assume that should we go ahead and push this forward and put the uh, sling capable Picatinny rail on there that we would have been able to use a sling just fine on it. Now we did do some barricade shooting with the LSS. That was another place where I thought this short forend may cause us some problems and it really didn't. The only issue that I ran into barricade shooting was I actually used a chair as an improvised barricade, which is one of the drills that I do at the range quite often. It's uh, a chair drill where you shoot off of different levels of the chair. In this case, the LSS across the slick top middle rail on the chair uh, didn't work really well. And the reason being this curve here, if I applied any kind of forward pressure to it, the rail wanted to slide up the curve. Now the simple solution to that is you use the forward edge of the magazine. You have this nice 90 degree hook here to hook that sharp chair rail and it works just fine. It works even better if you're running a 10 round magazine instead of the five round magazine we have here. It, on two by four barricades, that kind of stuff, uh, it actually is not an issue because you're getting a friction between the two by four and the front of the chassis that we didn't have the rifle wanting to try to ride up the barricade. But that's something to just keep in mind and you may have to modify the way that you shoot on the barricade to add a little bit more downward pressure to keep the rifle in its uh, position. But again, 
not a big deal. Now you can see that we've got quite a bit of material here around the mag well on the LSS and that stabilizes the magazines really really well. We didn't have any failures to feed or any feed issues whatsoever with the MDT LSS and I didn't have any problems with knocking the magazines out or the magazines coming loose. So they did a really good job getting that in there but they still left enough relief on the sides that you can release it and get your fingers up here to grab the magazine. Now again, as I mentioned, we have a five round magazine in here now, which makes it a very sleek system. Uh, it lines up really well. We didn't have any problems catching the magazine release or any of that nonsense. A 10 round magazine obviously will protrude down quite a bit, but it still won't protrude past the pistol grip. So you still end up having a nice low system that you can get close to the ground with. The magazine release worked very well. Uh, it stayed latched in, held our magazine solidly, and again, we didn't have any problems with it accidentally releasing. If you're a big fan of coming forward and using your trigger finger, you can still kind of get up in there and use your trigger finger to release the magazine, but we found it works a whole lot better with just hooking it with your thumb. The trigger guard does protect the magazine release from the rear, so you're not going to drag it across a flat surface and release that magazine. Now we've had the LSS for quite some time, so we shot it in some adverse conditions, shot it in some winter weather, and gloved up we had no problems getting my finger inside the trigger guard. Now let's talk for a minute about the buttstock area here. We chose to attach a Magpul CTR stock to our LSS, and there were a couple of reasons for that. One is the exceptional lockup that you get with the Magpul CTR stocks. With the secondary locking function here, we don't have any rattle whatsoever. The stock's not loose on the tube. Uh, it locks up really well, almost as solid as a fixed stock. The other benefit to the Magpul CTR is you are able to utilize Magpul's risers. Uh, these are not something you use on an AR-15 because they will interfere with the charging handle, but on a bolt action setup like this, they work extremely well. This is a three quarter inch riser, the .75 riser, and it gives us the perfect cheek well to use with this low mounted 40 millimeter scope. So overall, it is a very, very nice system. There is an added benefit to using a carbine stock like this if you have smaller statured shooters or you pass this rifle between different shooters. It's very easy to release your stock, adjust it to wherever you want it, lock it in, tighten it down, and you're good to go. There's really no fussing around with thumb wheels or spacers or anything else. So the carbine stock actually gives you a pretty good advantage there. Now on the back here, we have MDT's adjustable butt pad that bolts right into the back of the CTR. And this gives us this nice cushy recoil pad that we can slide up and down and get locked in exactly where we want it to be. I usually like to have the heel of my stock lined up with the top of my comb. This allows me to do it and it really allows me to fit a carbine stock perfectly to my body. Now, obviously this is an added expense. We'll be doing a more detailed review of this butt pad a little bit later on. But while we worked with the chassis, it worked very, very well. Overall, I had very few complaints about the LSS chassis system. I had to modify a couple of my techniques on barricades just because of the short forend and because it puts me a little bit closer to the obstacles but it still worked very well. I think that this chassis system will fill a variety of roles from the hunter to the casual shooter to even law enforcement snipers because you're able to carry over AR-15 ergonomics to a bolt action rifle, which is something most police officers are already familiar with, the AR-15 ergonomics. Uh, the price on the chassis system right out of the box the center section is $399 now that is on the lower end of the chassis price spectrum but you do have to keep in mind that you're going to add an extra cost with the buttstock and the pistol grip in this case we added about $100 not counting the adjustable butt pad here for our stock, our tube, and our pistol grip. The LSS chassis also does not come with a magazine, so you're gonna add about a $70 AICS magazine to the whole system. So when we're looking at it, 
for everything that you need to be able to bolt your action in and roll, you're looking at approximately $570. Now you can save a little bit of money going with the MDT polymer magazines over factory AICS magazines, but that still only knocks it down a couple of bucks. So if you're comparing against other chassis, uh, you're gonna wanna compare in about the $570 price range. But for $570, I think you still get a lot of value. Again, $399 just for the center section where you're gonna drop 200 or more, usually just for a bottom metal that accepts AICS magazines for a standard stock. So when you think about it, it actually fits in that price tier fairly well. We had a ton of fun with the MDT LSS system. It's a very nice handling, very light system. I really wish I had a 16 inch barrel to action to drop in here to really bring the system down considerably on the overall size. If you wanted to, you could also mount folding stock adapters in here that will allow you to swing the stock to the side and really cut the overall package down to a very manageable size. Now, the MDT LSS chassis is available in a couple of different colors. You can either get it in the black that we have here, you can get it in flat dark earth or olive drab. Uh, those are all Cerakoted colors, uh, so the finish is very durable. We have had no problem whatsoever with Cerakote before, and it's actually our preferred finish for barreled actions. Now, the Rifles that the MDT LSS is available for are the Remington 700 short action like we have here, the Remington 700 long action, Remington Model 7, and various Savage Antica models. So they're really covering a wide array of rifles that you can get into one of these chassis systems. The V-Block bedding system worked very well. You can drop a rifle into one of these very quickly and get it up and running. So overall, we can definitely give the Modular Driven Technologies Light Sniper System a thumbs up. I can definitely recommend it if you're looking for a lightweight, compact chassis system without a bunch of cheese grater hung all over it. If you've got any questions or comments about the MDT LSS, please leave them in the comments section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you've liked this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, Get out and shoot!